So I kind of pulled another fast one on you. This is actually a slide you had previously, but I went ahead and inserted it here again because the next topic I want to talk about is related to the downdraft. And I wanted to remind you that if this is a, this has to be a cell that's in its, a uh, thunderstorm cell that's in its mature stage. We know that because it has both an updraft, it's the red here, and a downdraft, it's the blue here. And associated with the downdraft, of course, is this precipitation. And we, um, the downdraft is a cold downdraft. And the thing about the fact that it's cold, and actually it's cold relative, related to a few things, among them what we call evaporative cooling, I think I mentioned earlier. So basically, this downdraft is not just a hmm, hmm, hmm gravity, I think that, uh, the water will come down. It literally is a an air moving down. So the next slide I want to kind of talk about is what happens in some cases with that that movement of air downward associated with the downdraft. Now one of the things we've talked about earlier is that that movement of air creates what we call a gust front kind of in front of the storm as it's been drawn here. But that downward air that downward wind actually can create a, a few other phenomenon. These would all be associated with the downdraft of a mature thunderstorm cell. Downbursts and microbursts are very similar. Um, I guess they're just kind of different in size of, or uh, related to their size, I'm not sure. But what they both do is basically they are an intense um, vertical wind, just kind of downward. Okay. Sometimes you'll hear uh, weather folks talk about something called straight line winds. And straight line winds are basically, this is an example of a straight line wind. This is not to say that once it hits the ground, if it's a downdraft, it's going to go both ways. Remember, like gust fronts go both ways. But the opposite of a straight line wind would be kind of a wind that has rotation. That would be, of course, wind associated with um, a tornado. Straight are these straight line winds associated with downbursts and microbursts actually can be about as destructive as a tornado. They have been known to down like entire, you know, they can down an entire section of trees. And it's kind of interesting after the fact, if they're trying to differentiate between these straight line winds versus a tornado, you can actually look to how the trees were laid. This might be a straight line wind if these are my trees. And if it was a tornado, of course, you'll kind of see some kind of swirly patterns in my trees that were laid down. Because the, you know, we quite honestly some oftentimes don't capture what's going on with these events as they're occurring. It's afterwards, kind of some detective work. So these kind of vertical thrusts of wind, called a downburst or a microburst, actually can be uh, problematic to airplanes. And I have a picture on the next page to kind of show you that. But before I leave this, I wanted to mention the term de ratio because you might have um, heard that as it relates to weather before. A de ratio um, is just a crazy um, straight line wind that's associated with a squall line of thunderstorm cells. And as I understand it, it's not just that downdraft that's creating it, but that downdraft is plugging into strong winds at upper elevations and creating that vertical wind. And day ratios are just, then they're a, a, a picture a squall line that has just very intense winds, and that's a day ratio. And sometimes with uh, day ratios, they can look for something called a bow echo. And what they're looking for is in the radar of the squall line, they kind of look for it to kind of bow out to show that it's, it's interacting with some of that upper level wind. But back to the airplanes that can have problems with these, um, these strong winds we call downbursts or microbursts. Actually, again, if I understand it correctly, Reagan's plane, Ronald Reagan, when he was uh, president flying in Air Force One, um, had such an incident. And I don't entirely understand it, but you can actually get these downbursts and microbursts that where there's no active, not, not, it's not obvious to you that there's a thunderstorm uh, cell there that's either dissipating or building. So um, here we go. This is our uh, downburst or microburst, and it splashes, it hits the ground, of course, 
and it goes in both directions and it creates these eddies. Can you see kind of these eddies on either side? So imagine that poor plane, it comes through and it has to correct for this wind going up and then it has to correct for this, this uh, wind going down and then again for this wind going up. So it's not a good thing. Um, this is showing you kind of the, you see the little eddy here? And you know, would a plane necessarily know that we have a downward wind here? Not necessarily.